Good afternoon, Money.net Live. I know all of you are very anxious to see and hear from Carly Crowhurst about uh, mortgages and housing market. Uh, Carly, this is a different week than the last few weeks. It's, yeah, it's definitely a little bit different. I'm eating a little bit of crow. You know, we, we talked over the past couple of weeks and I stood by my quarter increase, hoping that last 50 basis point increase would uh, show a little downward trend in the inflation data, which it did not. And right. so as most, most people probably know, right, we had a 75 basis point increase yesterday and there's talks of more similar increases between 50 basis points, 75 basis points over the next several meetings. So not a pretty outlook at the moment. Yeah, I think some of the things we heard from Powell and, of course, this morning from Kashkari is, you know, Powell said the 75 basis points is, is not normal. That was a word that he used. Kashkari yeah. said that, uh, yeah, 75 is back on for next month. But after that, 50 basis points. Um, the 10 year went explosive to 3.5 percent, uh, but backed off of that today. We're now down to 3.2 percent here. Um, is this the end of the is this the end of the housing market? Is it over? I don't think it's over. People are always going to be looking for houses. So I, I can't say it's going to ever be over. Uh, but yeah, to your point to uh, 1994, that's that's the last time we had an increase like that. So just to put some perspective on things, it's, it's not the norm. Uh, this market is not the norm. What we're coming out of is not the norm. So it's just, it's hard to say really what's going to happen. I do think it is going to start slowly shifting more into a seller's market, uh, mm -hmm. but that's still becomes an issue when there's a lack of supply. You know, that, that's a very good point. I mean, the market still pushed up in the 90s, even with the, this heavy uh, push in the, uh, the 10s and the 30s. A lot of you were looking at the 10s and 2s, 10-year of the 2-year. And I, we heard from a broker earlier yesterday uh, talking about maybe an invert of that. Um, in, the, in, the, in the near term, we also saw mortgage apps dropping. Uh, we saw a 14% drop. Are you seeing that yourself? I mean, we're seeing collectively, depending on when you're baselining the data from, or okay. origination activity as a whole is down by more than 30%. Oh. So that's as a whole, right? Refis purchases just collectively. Okay. I think purchase activity is still up. There's People are still trying to buy houses. Uh, I know it kind of depends on the pocket of the market, but we're seeing less and less multiple offers, less and less over asking price. I think we're starting to see some declines in, in the list prices, right? Coming off a little bit to try and bring more buzz to these homes. And yeah, I was just writing that down. You said that purchase activity is up and refi is down. Is that correct? Yes. All right. So why are people not re refinancing now? Were they just on the fence and now they're not on the fence anymore and saying, nope, okay, it's fine. I'm, I'm fine where I'm at. Well, there's several reasons. We're coming out of a rate and term market, right? Rates have been very, very low for the last several yeah. years. A lot of people capitalized on that and brought their rates down, terms down. As rates shift upward, that gap kind of closes and refi becomes more of a cash out, right? People are starting right. to to cash out, which is smart to do. If you're going to be in your home for a long time and you have equity right now, it's a smart time to do cash out if you're doing smart things with the money that you're taking, right? If it's a nest egg, rates are still low historically, mm -hmm. right? If you look back 20 years, rates were nine to 12%. So we're still- But it seems to me that the people that are making the originations of loans are, are younger, newer buyers. Am I right? For so they, so they for don't purchases? know that they don't know that rates are that low. They're they're so used to the last five years of rates. I yeah, I think it's a mixed bag, right? Okay. I have my clientele has, ranges in in all age groups, so I can't say I'm seeing certain pockets on my side of specific age groups. I think people have been around a long time do know, you know, people who bought houses 10, 15, 20 years ago will tell you, oh, when I bought my house, I was at 14%. When I bought my house, I was at 10%. Of course, we know 10, 15 years ago, price points were a lot lower as well. So it, the price points do offset the rates, right? So as price point goes up, that rate makes makes it a little bit harder to afford. Uh, but still, yeah, cash out's good, right? Depending on what you're doing with the money. If you're paying off revolving debt, 19, 20, 30% in credit card debt, which is now going up thanks to these uh, increases as well. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Is We just saw the numbers come out this morning. One, It's $1.2 trillion in consumer debt, the largest ever. Um, did, these, did these people just go on revenge vacation a little too much? The party over? I think there's been a lot of extra spending during COVID. You know, when you're locked up at home and nothing to do, you're sitting on Amazon or whatever you're doing and 
buying all kinds of stuff. I do think we're going to start to see some of that shifting though. I think a lot of the things that were acquired during COVID as people are back to work are going to start being sold off, right? Things that we don't need, all the toys, the boats, the extra expenses, as people, you know, people start tightening their belts. Wait, 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 wait. Did you say no more boats? Uh, do not tell my wife that I don't want to, uh, I, I like, my, I like, uh, I like boating. So I'm okay with that one. <laughs> I'm not saying everyone, but I think we'll start to see some of that, right? I'm already starting to see it out here, starting to see things like that listed, toy okay. haulers, horses. And do you think, do you, oh, wait, that's, it's interesting. So equipment like, uh, like backhoes and things of that nature, right? I'm not so much of that, but I'm seeing a lot of toy haulers, horses. I have seen some boats getting listed. I'm also starting to see things like that being relisted and reposted and sitting longer. Mm -hmm. And I'm starting to see. And are you seeing people lowering prices on their their sales? Oh, right. I'm starting to see some price drops on those things too. And and I love this time. Unfortunately, uh, you know, I I think cash is king right now. I've said this to a lot of people that uh, if you're looking to buy things, just wait a little bit, right? Yeah. I think if you hold off, you'll start to see some of those things sitting longer. People be more negotiable. Obviously it's not just the market. Gas prices are going to have a impact on that too, right? It's less affordable to take your toy hauler out for the weekend and gas everything up and do these long drives. And I just think it's going to be happening less and less. We are seeing oil dropping here. There was 116 a barrel earlier for WTI now sitting at 107.53. So a massive drop there in the oil number. So very good. All right. So you were talking about purchases earlier. Um, You're still holding steady somewhat, but dropping not nearly as much as the refis. Um, Are they buying new homes or used homes? I think it's both. You know, okay. on my side, I don't see as much new builds because a lot of those buyers do go directly through the builder. Okay. So I don't have numbers on that, but I think people are trying to buy what, whatever's available. That's very interesting. You know, I, I see a lot of people talking about that. They want to short uh, the the home builders. Um, are they going to go through a bad period here, you think? I think it's, yeah, I think it's going to tighten up because I know everyone talks about lumber, but lumber is really the only commodity that goes into a home that's traded. Right. Nobody's talking about concrete and the shortage of that. Nobody's talking about all the other things that go into building a home, all the wiring, the electrical, the staffing, the the gas to get, you know, to and from with all these big trucks and deliveries. All of that impacts the cost of the overall build and the affordability. Yeah. And I'm looking at lumber prices right now. Wow. uh, You're totally right here. I'm looking at uh, cash lumber prices here dropped over the last. uh, Wow. Uh, board foots here now down to about 550 whereas earlier um it looks like back in january we were sitting over 1400 so the biggest drop there in lumber probably in about 15 years so yeah i can totally see that the other thing that that, uh, goes into home building would be copper is that right copper metal all of those things and we have a major supply shortage on a lot of those commodities as well some of them are not domestically sourced so Mm, that's a very good point yep yeah. And we just saw copper futures uh, dropping here down to 741.80 now for 1,000 uh, yards. So, yeah, look, look at that. That's a, a massive drop there, too. So I can see that, right? Maybe they saw that. Maybe the home builders were not buying as much, and they foresaw that a little bit. Uh, okay, very good. Um, let me ask one more question before I let you go. Um, obviously, we've got the next Fed meeting coming up. Uh, you said 25 last time. Uh, Kashkari and Fed gov, uh, governors are all, except for uh, Master, is saying uh, 75. What are you thinking for the next one? Unfortunately, based on what's happened out of these last two, it probably will be a 75 basis point okay. increase. Interestingly, if we went back to the beginning of the year, they were saying, oh, three increases for 2022, two for 23, two for 24. And that's not the picture at all at this point. Now we've had hmm. more than what they anticipated for the whole year. And now they're talking about two or three more possibly. So so I said one more question. I want to ask you one more question back at that. I've been asking this the same of everybody. Um, has it, we, we keep hearing these changes in the Fed and moving the goalposts. Uh, do you think the Fed has lost credibility? I, I think, yes. Okay. I, yeah, I, no, I I, they, I, I, I in my opinion, I feel like they waited a little bit too long to jump in the game and start trying to make change. And, and now, unfortunately, the decisions that are being made could really, in my opinion, cripple the economy that in parallel to the, the gas prices. 100% agree with you, Carly. I think the Fed has lost their uh, credibility, has for a while. And I don't see anybody agreeing with, disagreeing with that uh, aspect. So good. Well, I'm glad to see that. All right. Carly Curse, we'll see you back here next Friday. All right. See you next week. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye.